Uncle Paul promised to tell the children about bees. When he had a free moment, he began the story. A hive can have twenty to thirty thousand bees. That's like a small town. In a town, people have different jobs. Bakers make bread, carpenters make furniture, and tailors make clothes. In the hive, bees also have different jobs. Queens, drones, and workers. There is only one queen in each hive. She is the mother of all the bees. The queen is bigger than the workers and does not do any work herself. Her job is to lay eggs. She can have up to 1,200 eggs inside her at once. The other bees take care of her and feed her the best food. She is very important because she keeps the hive full of bees. The fathers are called drones. There are six or eight hundred drones in a hive. They are bigger than the workers, but smaller than the queen. They have big eyes and no stingers. Drones do not work. They only have one job, to fly with the queen one day. After that, they die or are kicked out of the hive because they do not help with any work. The workers are the busiest bees. There are twenty to thirty thousand workers in a hive. They are the ones you see in the garden flying from flower to flower. Young workers, called wax bees, gather nectar and pollen from flowers. They also make wax to build the hive. Older workers, called nurses, stay in the hive to take care of the young bees. Workers defend the hive and do all the jobs needed to keep the hive running smoothly. The children were very interested in what Uncle Paul said. Jules asked, Do the wax bees find wax in flowers? No, said Uncle Paul. They make the wax themselves. The bee's stomach has parts that produce wax. The wax comes out like sweat from our skin. The bee rubs its stomach with its legs to gather the wax. The bee then uses the wax to build cells. These cells store honey and hold baby bees, called larvae. Emile said, so bees build their house with wax from their own bodies. That's amazing. Yes, said Uncle Paul. Just like snails make their own shells, bees make their own hive. It is one of the many wonders of nature. The children listened eagerly, amazed at the incredible work of the bees. Bees make honey and need a place to store it. They also need a place to keep their baby bees, called larvae. To do this, they build small rooms called cells. These cells are open at one end and closed at the other. Each cell has six sides. These six-sided shapes are called hexagons. Bees are very good at geometry, which is the study of shapes. They build their cells with perfect precision. The cells are placed next to each other, back to back and side by side. This creates a structure called a honeycomb. The honeycomb hangs vertically in the hive. One side has the openings of one layer of cells, and the other side has the openings of another layer. The honeycomb is attached to the top of the hive. When there are many bees, when a bee is ready to make wax, it rubs its body to produce a small layer of wax. It then kneads the wax with its mandibles, jaws, and mixes it with saliva to make it flexible. The bee uses this wax to build the cells. The cells are built with great care. Experienced bees watch the new bees to make sure they are building correctly. If a new bee makes a mistake, an experienced bee fixes it. With many bees working together, they can build a large honeycomb in a day. The shape of the cells is important. Round cells would leave empty spaces between them. Square cells would not hold enough honey for the amount of wax used. The best shape is the hexagon. Hexagons fit together perfectly without leaving any empty spaces. They also hold the most honey with the least amount of wax. Bees do not think about these shapes. They build hexagonal cells naturally. They are guided by a higher wisdom that humans find amazing. Bees are incredible creatures, and their work is one of nature's greatest wonders. The bee works hard from sunrise, visiting flowers to collect nectar. 
Nectar is a sweet liquid that flowers produce to attract bees and other insects. Bees need nectar to make honey. But how do they carry the nectar back to the hive? The bee has a special stomach, like a natural can, to store the nectar. The bee goes into a flower and uses its long tongue to drink the nectar. It also collects pollen from the flower. The bee's body has tiny hairs and special baskets on its legs to hold the pollen. First, the bee rolls in the flower to get covered in pollen. Then, it brushes the pollen into the baskets on its legs. The bee's baskets get full of yellow pollen, which it takes back to the hive. When the bee's stomach is full of nectar and its baskets are full of pollen, it flies back to the hive. When the bee gets back to the hive, it might give some honey to the queen. Then, it finds an empty cell and puts the honey inside by spitting it out. The bee also puts the pollen into another cell. The queen and drones, the father bees, do not work. Only the worker bees have the tools to gather nectar and pollen. Bees need honey for food. They do not make it just for us. The bees store honey in cells and cover the cells with wax. They only use this stored honey when they cannot find food outside, like on rainy days. When the queen lays an egg, it hatches into a larva, a little white worm. The nurse bees feed the larva with special food that gets stronger as the larva grows. Inside the cell, the larva changes into a nymph. After 12 days, the nymph becomes a bee. It chews its way out of the cell, dries its wings, and starts working. Young bees gather nectar and pollen, and older bees take care of the young. In a beehive, special cells are made for queen bees. These cells are larger and stronger than those for worker bees. They look like thimbles and are called royal cells. The queen lays eggs in both large and small cells but she doesn't know which eggs will become queens. The special treatment involves feeding the larva a special food called royal jelly. This special food makes the larva grow into a queen. Jules said, The bee story is the best one you've told us.